Hello everyone, welcome to our first exercise in Photoshop Online. So let's just jump into it here. Um, you are at the point where you finished your intro discussion, you finished your syllabus quiz, and now we're doing our first exercise. Um, this resolution file setup exercise is important for a few reasons. Um, this is really the only assignment that's different from the in-person Photoshop course and the reason being is I found that this stuff was something that a lot of the students um, didn't pick up on as quickly in the online class and probably it's because it was something that I really emphasize something I think is really important uh, when I saw my face-to-face -face students um, but maybe only covered it once or twice in the other video lectures so I turned it into a an exercise requirement for the online class. Um, as it says here, this assignment covers steps that I expect you to do for every assignment in this class. So that's why it's important. Document and setup organization, along with understanding how resolution works in Photoshop, are probably the most basic and some of the most important aspects of working with the program. Okay, so this activity covers those. Um, I cover how I expect you to set up a file for our assignments. And I also um, cover how to make sure you have a usable resolution in the images that you're using for your projects. Okay, so I am recording the uh, video instructions right now. Um, a couple things to remember that we'll come back to in a little bit here. Um, the next section is specifications. So every assignment that we have here is um, going to have a specification area. The most basics of the specifications are covering the image size, the resolution, and the color mode that you should be using. Okay, so I'm telling you what the image size here. It is 2.4 inches by 2.34 inches. Um, this is the physical size of the image when we view it either on screen or in print. Um, but as you know, we can zoom in and out of this image when we have it in Photoshop. Okay, the image size on the screen is always dependent on the resolution that you're looking at it on. Okay, so for example, whether you are looking at a JPEG or any kind of image, whether you're looking at it on you know, a phone screen or a normal um, external display or a Mac screen on the desktop, it changes the actual size of the displayed image. And it's because different screens have different resolutions. Um, we're not going to get too far into that, but just remember that different screens have different resolutions and usually those don't match um, the printed size of the image. Okay, the resolution is the number of dots per inch or pixels per inch. So when we're talking about an on-screen image, it's pixels per inch. When we're talking about a printed image, it's dots per inch. Um, they can sometimes be used interchangeably. Just remember the standard for um, decent quality printing is about 300 dpi and most of our assignments will use 300 dpi for this project. Uh, for most of our assignments will use 300 dpi. This exercise also uses 300 dpi. Okay, color mode is RGB. Um, RGB is a standard color mode for um, on-screen based media. CMYK is the standard color mode for print based imagery. However, however, and this is important in Photoshop, not all of Photoshop's filters and other features are available um, if you aren't using RGB. So we will almost exclusively be working in RGB. In fact, for this class, we do exclusively work in RGB, but in other cases, you're usually working in RGB also. And then one of the last steps is to convert it to CMYK if you do need a CMYK image. Okay, also we use the 8-bit color space um, because that is the one that has all of Photoshop features in it too. Okay, so instructions here. Um, things to remember in Photoshop before we start working is that Photoshop is a raster-based pro program. So image resolution is very important. So when you have a specification that says a certain size, um, that matters because what could happen is if you make it a smaller size or different resolution, then it could print out lower quality than what the client is expecting. We don't want that to happen. Okay, and also setting up your document right is key to making sure your workflow 
um, goes right, key to making sure that it's organized and other people who might be working with your Photoshop file um, understand what's going on with it. So these very first steps are covering how to do that. So step one, um, create a new document based on the specification. So let's just go ahead and open Photoshop here. We are going to create a new document by going to, I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't get in the way of the screen. We're going to go to File, New. Okay, and here's our new document window. Now let me move this over so I can, you can see what's going on in both programs here. Let's go ahead and just size Photoshop like this, and we can just see what's going on with both of them. Okay, so new document, file, new. Okay, we're going to go ahead and name our document. We're going to call this resolution-setup-your-last-name. Okay, the width uh, is going to be inches. It's going to be 2.4 inches by 2.34 inches. Okay, resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB at 8 bits. And then it's up to you what you want to put in your background. I like to do transparent backgrounds. Okay, so we're going to hit create. Okay, now immediately what we want to do is save our file. Okay, file save as, I'm just going to save it onto the desktop here. Um, save it as a Photoshop file with the layers. Okay, and then now that it's saved, every time we press um, Command S, it, it goes ahead and saves the file for you. So you're not going to be missing any work if you have a file crash or something like that. Okay, so what we have here is an almost square document. We have one layer that Photoshop automatically creates called Layer 1. And we're going to go ahead and um, go on to the next step. Okay, so the next step, download and open the assignment file. So I'm going to open, I'm going to download this file, which is Photoshop Small. It opens it up in preview, which I don't need it in preview. I'm going to download this file, Photoshop Large. As you can see, this is a much larger version of the Photoshop logo. Okay, so we have a small and a large version of the Photoshop logo. Then in Photoshop, we're going to go to File Open and select those two files, and they'll open here in separate work, workspaces in Photoshop. So new, we're going to go to Open, um, click Photoshop Large and Photoshop Small. You can select them both at once and hit Open. And you'll see we have these new tabs that open up. So now I have three workspaces open. I have our Photoshop Small logo, our Photoshop Large logo, and the document that I created. Okay, and um, so now we have that step done. Next, we will go to set up our layers. So going back to our resolution and setup file that we created new, we're going to rename layer one to the background. Okay, oops, just did something. Go ahead and just rename this to background. Okay, then we've got a background layer. And so I want to take a moment here to, to remind you that this is, this is where it kind of begins, where I expect you to set up um, every project file the same way. So you will almost always, when you create your new document, you will have a background layer. Make sure you create that. And usually when you open a new document, for example, if you have an image that you opened already, uh, or an image that was there already that you didn't create a new document for, it will automatically open that image, call it background, and that layer will be locked. We almost never want to work um, with that background layer. What we will usually do is duplicate that layer and work off of the duplicated layer. The reason being is that once you change pixels in a layer and save your Photoshop document and close it, you don't get those pixels back. They're always gone. And so we want to keep a copy of the original layers um, unedited before we make any edits, because then we can always go back to it. Okay. Now ours is a blank layer, so it doesn't really matter for this assignment, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so now we have that one named to background. 
Um, next, it says create a new group called Originals. And the way that you create groups here is by um, clicking on this little icon at the very bottom right. See where my cursor is down here? On the very bottom right, you're clicking on the little icon that looks like a folder. And that's to create a new group. So I'm going to call this group Originals. And then it says to create a new group called um, Small Logo. Small Logo. And I'm going to create a new group, Large Logo. OK. And so already, we have some file organization happening here. Um, and file organization is very important. Number one, so I can understand what you did when you were working on your files. But number two, also so that if you ever have to transfer this to somebody else, if you um, take a project and put it to the side for a number of days, weeks, or months and come back to it, you kind of know what's going on with the image um, when you come back to it or somebody else knows what's going on with it when they start to work with it. Okay, And as it says here, this is important. Always save unedited originals of images and include them in your final file. This is a part of your file organization grade. And, and the reason for that is I want to see the changes that you've made um, to the file. And so we'll go through those steps right now where we import the images and then we'll duplicate them to work off the duplicated copy instead of the originals. So we're going to import and resize the small and large logos. For the small logo, go to your Photoshop small file. You got it here. Select the layer it's in. And then uh, selecting everything in the layer by pressing Command A. I'm going to press Command A. And you'll notice, if I zoom in here, it's, it might be really hard to see on your screen on the video, but there's you know, marching ants going around um, all the layers. So that means all of it's selected. I'm going to press Command C to copy um, those pixels in this layer. Okay, so now that I've pressed Command C, I've copied them. I'll go back over here, and inside of the Originals folder, I'm going to with that selected, I'm going to press Command V, and it will place it inside of there. As long as I have this layer selected, and I press Command V, the layer will end up inside of that group. Okay, so I select an Originals group, press Command V, my small Photoshop file ends up here. Okay, and we're going to rename this layer. This is another important step. You never want to leave layers um, named layer one, layer one copy, layer two copy. Um, it's just bad organization. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this layer as, uh, what's, what's my instructions here? Small dash original. Okay, so you can re rename a layer by just double clicking in the layer name. Okay, small dash original. Okay, so there's my small original. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J. Command J um, is short for jump, so it jumps a new layer um, up from the selection. Okay, and then I've got a small dash original copy. I'm going to drag this layer, click and drag, into the small logo file, and then I'm just going to rename this layer as small-logo. Okay. Now I'm going to resize it. And we'll resize it by selecting that layer and pressing Command T. Now what happens when we press Command T is we get these little um, little grab points around the layer. And what we can do is we can resize it. Now notice, if I just grab a point and start to resize it, it squishes it, it makes, you know, it makes it much shorter than it is tall, or I can make it much taller than it is wide. Um, it, and normally we don't want to do that. We want to hold our shift key. And holding the shift key keeps the layer in the same kind of format without squishing it or stretching it. And then additionally, I'm going to hold, I'm going to press the Alt um, or Option key here. You'll notice what happens then is if I'm holding Shift and Option, it not only keeps it the same format without stretching it or squishing it, but it also keeps it centered. So I'm going to hold those two down and pull it open until it fills the entire screen. 
Okay, and there we go. And what has happened here? We began with a very small image. We've upsized it to fit our workspace and it just looks like crap. Okay, so this is another important thing to learn from this exercise is that we cannot take images smaller than our workspace and upsize them to our workspace and expect the image quality to be okay. This is not okay. This looks really, really bad and I will take points off um, for this, probably a lot of points, because this, um, we just don't upsize images in Photoshop, okay? And the way that you know whether your image is going to be big enough or not is you open it as we did as a separate Photoshop file, you copy it, you bring it in, and you paste it, and it will paste it at 100% of the size um, based on the resolution. So if you paste it and it's smaller than the workspace that you're planning on using it in, then you know it is not of good enough resolution to use. Okay, so that's our first lesson there. We have our small logo and we can see why we don't use small resolution and big spaces. Okay, so um, with that being seen now, we will go ahead and turn this layer off by clicking the little eyeball next to the small logo group. We'll just turn the whole group off by clicking that and then um, what should happen is it's no longer visible. Okay, oh, let me turn this off. So let me show you again the, the little eyeball icon next to the group right here will hide the visibility of that group. Okay, so your screen should look like this right now. We should have our small one. And then for the large logo, it says repeat the above steps for the large logo, naming it large original and large logo where appropriate. Okay, so we'll go to our large, select the layer, command A to copy, command, or I'm sorry, command A to select all, command C to copy, back to our original file, and we'll click on the originals layer, and press command V. We'll rename this layer to large-original. Okay, and you'll notice that this image is, if I press Command T here, it's exceeding the bounds of my document. And what that means is that um, when placed at 100% compared to the resolution of this document, this image is larger. And so um, what we can tell here is that we have an image of adequate resolution to use for our project, okay? Now, it's perfectly fine to um, downsize an image and use it because it's not gonna lose quality by downsizing it um, unless you were to save the file um, as like a flattened JPEG and then resizing it up after closing it, which we're not doing here. Here we can um, just go ahead and what we'll do is downsize it. Now I'm not gonna hold Alt because I don't want it to stay centered. I'm just gonna hold Shift to downsize it. And there it is, it fits in our space. Um, what I should have done here before doing that, I'm gonna press Command Z, is jumping it. So duplicating it and dragging it into the large logo group and renaming it as, um, what was our name? renaming it as large-logo, okay? And then at that point, holding shift, sizing it down. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so um, that's basically it. Just remember, since I pasted that and it was, um, larger than the document space, then I know it's, a, it's of good enough resolution to use. Okay, that's the important part of that step. Okay, so I'm going to just Command S, save my file, and now we can submit our file. So we should have three groups, large logo, small logo, and originals. And notice the, the difference in quality between that large and small. Might be hard to see on the video, but there's a huge difference in quality and I expect the good quality one in your projects, okay? We'll save the file 
and then submit it by uploading it to your file sharing service, okay? Which I have a link here in the instructions that um, show you how to do that. Just go to the 48 minute mark of that video and you'll find those instructions. Okay, good luck. Send me an email if you have any questions.